Today we have some new and big information about the Russia meddling investigation, courtesy of the fired former acting director of the FBI. Did you order a counterintelligence investigation into the president? I did. Did you suspect the president might actually be working for Russia? We thought that might be possible. Yes, we thought it might be possible. Andrew McCabe confirming that he made the decision May 2017 to investigate the President of the United States. Another revelation, top congressional leaders knew the FBI was working to determine if the leader of the free world was a Russian asset. Did you tell them that you had opened a counterintelligence investigation into President Trump? The purpose of the briefing was to let our congressional leadership know exactly what we'd been doing. Opening a case of this nature, not something that an FBI director, not something that an acting FBI director would do by yourself, right? This was a recommendation that came to me from my team. I reviewed it with our lawyers. I discussed it at length Did with you the tell Deputy Congress? Attorney General. And I told Congress what we had done. Did anyone object? That's the important part here, Savannah. No one objected. Not on legal grounds, not on constitutional grounds, and not based on the facts. CNN's Evan Perez back with us for this conversation. That is an important point in the sense that if you're a Trump supporter, you don't like Andy McCabe, he does have some credibility issues, you don't like Jim Comey, you could, we could have a debate forever about how he handled the Clinton email investigation, right. and you say this is all a deep state plot, Andy McCabe saying, hey, we went, and let's put the Gang of Eight up on the screen, we went to the leaders of Congress who get the most sensitive information, meaning the majority leader, the speaker, the two deputies, the, chair, the top two members of the intelligence committees, he's saying, hey, we brought these people into the loop, they could ask us questions. None of them raised any alarms trying to make the case this is a solid investigation. We had every reason to do this. Right. I think you've heard from Rudy Giuliani and from the president's son and other people that this was essentially a coup. This was a, a bureaucratic coup of the duly elected president of the United States. And if it was, then this was a strange kind of coup, right, where you let in the bipartisan leaders of Congress and let them know what you're doing. Um, and by the way, I mean, the investigation, even, even after, uh, after the president took office and so on, they, they kept going back and briefing members of Congress about the, the, the progress of the investigation, um, that, which, you know, which means that people were being brought in to, 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 to the sphere of knowing what, what exactly the FBI was up to. And of course, yeah, that's Andy McCabe saying, we checked the boxes, we did the right thing, here's how the President of the United States views this, the biggest abuse of power and corruption scandal in our history, and it's much worse than we thought. Andrew McCabe admitted to plotting a coup when he was serving in the FBI before he was fired for leaking, lying and leaking. And he tweets a whole bunch of Fox there. That's where the president's getting his information. Remember this, Andrew McCabe didn't go to the bathroom without the approval of Leak and James Comey. So the pre president's mildly interested in this story. Uh, mildly <laughs> is uh, putting it lightly, I would say. I like also like how his one tweet where he says that he didn't call his wife a loser to his face. Right? <laughs> the president clarifies that. But I do think this goes back to what we've seen the White House try to do is say that Andrew McCabe was unethical because he misled investigators and was fired. James Comey was fired because of how he handled the Hillary Clinton email investigation. But I think Andrew McCabe saying that he briefed people like Senator Mitch McConnell on this investigation and that they did not push back, which I don't think McConnell has so far responded to that accusation. That really shows that it wasn't just these two rogue people at the right. FBI, at the DOJ acting against the president, which is why how the White House has tried to sp spin this because of that. So I do think it raises more questions because Mitch McConnell, if he didn't say anything, uh, I think the president is going to have some questions from it. And McCabe is helpful, if you will, in connecting the dots. Again, in the sense that one would think all Americans, no matter who they voted for, Russia meddled in a United States presidential election. You would want that to be investigated. So there's topic number one. Then the question of was there Trump campaign collusion? Uh, Trump supporters back off at that one, but you would think if you have any evidence, you want to investigate that. Then this was the president trying to obstruct the investigation. Andy McCabe says, well, you have to connect all three dots. Why isn't that just the, the normal obstruction of justice criminal inquiry, which is substantial enough sure, on its own, but sure. what takes it to this next level where there's a suspicion that he's working for a foreign government? I mean, this is extraordinary. Because you have to ask yourself, Savannah, if you believe that the president might have obstructed justice for the purpose of ending our investigation into Russia, you have to ask yourself why. Why would any president of the United States not want the FBI to get to the bottom of Russian interference in our election? Now, again, if they have threshold evidence, the president was trying to thwart their investigation, that's a very valid question. Well, right, and, and the fact that he said now that he's, he briefed the Gang of Eight on this, and not just once but continually, it puts everything that happened in the last two years in a very different light because right. these members of Congress were aware at least of some of the basis for, for the, the opening of this counterintelligence investigation and 
to the degree that he was able to connect those dots for the Gang of Eight, for the top congressional leaders, they would have been read into that as well. So they've now watched as all of these these developments have unfolded. Uh, they all had their own uh, response when the president went Including to some of Trump's allies. Including way, some right? of his allies. Devin Nunes, who was right. the head of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, then went on and was, was uh, running his own investigation, <laughs> all the while knowing right. um, some of the basis, some of the reasons why this investigation was open. And, and later on in the game, pushing back, I think, quite forcefully, it puts that in a new light as well, why he was, you know, going to the White House and speaking to White House officials in the midst of all of this, knowing sort of what the FBI knew and why, what got them to this, you know, not conclusion, but this, you know, set of very uh, troubling questions that led him to open the investigation.